Alright guys, welcome back to Formula 1 News. It's sprint race weekend for the Austrian Grand Prix and many teams are bringing upgrades either this weekend or in very short order indeed. Aston Martin gives some indication as to what they're focusing on but also Mercedes reaffirming that they are making more progress at the moment than they have felt in years as a team. Very much on Twitter, your thoughts and the comments. Hit the like button if you enjoy. Subscribe if you're new as always. Firstly, when I saw this this morning I thought okay this must be some sort of fake account or whatever they're just making this up. But indeed this graphic is actually real. Breaking Ryan Reynolds buys a stake in Alpine. Now, it's not just Ryan Reynolds, but he is part of a investorship group with a lot of Hollywood actors, actually, that have bought a 24% equity stake in Alpine for around about 200 million euros. So that brings the approximate valuation of Alpine's Formula One team to something like a billion dollars, which, um, you know, at least a billion euros, billion dollars, you know, something in that ballpark anyway. And this is about right. Okay, maybe it's not about right from your perspective, but this aligns with what we saw recently where apparently Red Bull were offered a billion to buy Alpha Tauri and for someone else to change that team into something else and uh, they decided not to sell. So that is the approximate figures right now that are going around for these teams and it's going to be pretty interesting to see what this means because we know what Ryan Reynolds and others have done with Wrexham Football Club here in the UK and maybe they're going to try and have some similar success with Alpine. It's tricky and I'm not exactly sure money has been the problem with Alpine because fundamentally they're a team that should have achieved more than they have as a straight up works team effectively Renault they should be better than they are and I can't exactly see this making them all of a sudden not the fifth best team which they just seem perennially inclined to be now with Aston Martin taking some big steps and making some big investments but yeah maybe this is the start of an Alpine turnaround but I'm not so convinced to be honest this does also align quite nicely though with a lot of conversations around additional teams coming along. Even Toby Gruner says here that according to their information, three F1 teams have been approached by potential buyers or investors last year with offers valuing those teams at in the region of $1 billion. All of them have rejected the sale. So obviously we've talked about Alfred Tauri being a possibility, but apparently other teams as well have also been offered a lot of money to become, you know, to sell or to give up some sort of stake. And they've all said no. So that just shows how much they believe business is booming and that 1 billion is potentially in their opinion not even a fair valuation they want more and this is why potentially Andretti or high tech and others trying to come into the sport they're not just going to be able to pay 200 million and get in the fee that's going to be necessary to deal with the dilution of the prize earnings for the teams is going to be have to push like a billion dollars right it's going to be a big investment and that is what the teams are seemingly willing to pay because high tech Grand Prix actually announced just today that they they are intending to enter the Formula 1 championship. There's been some talks, of course, they were in F2, F3, F4, stuff like this. So they could hopefully put together a competitive outfit. They've also sold 25% of its organization to Vladimir Kim, a Kazakh businessman. And look, I don't know where that guy got his wealth from. You can speculate on that. Probably find out that information on the internet. But um, again, it seems like one of those ownership situations that might seem a little bit questionable to the FIA making these calls. And hopefully they look at Andretti's application because there's a few intended applications here and Hightech have announced it officially today but um, it's currently under the process of being reviewed anyway. Hopefully Andretti can make it onto the grid. That's what I want to see. But fundamentally it's not just the FIA that gets to decide these things. The teams have to agree as well and that is pretty much what um, you know the top guy here says, Ben Sulliam. He's like, look, we can't force the existing F1 teams to welcome the newcomers but if the newcomers pay enough money, they bring enough revenue, they bring enough eyes and potentially new partners and stuff to the sport then it can be valuable. So hopefully, in an ideal world, there'd be like 12 teams on the grid, I think, with 24 cars. 22 is fine. 20 is also probably fine. But I think many would like at least one additional team. And there's plenty of applications flying in at the moment for 2026. They're currently reviewing them. And wherever that goes from there, they will choose their favourites. And then it comes down to whether the teams actually agree to it and the amount of money that these teams, if they want to enter, might potentially be paying to do so. Speaking of Alpha Tauri as well because as we say Red Bull rejected an offer to buy Alpha Tauri as a team entirely they I guess still believe that their Red Bull Junior program is worth so much to them that this is a valuable thing
thing to have as a second team because back in the day, Toro Rosso used to be relatively competitive and Alfa Tauri had a decent car a couple of years ago. This year, not the case at all. They're pretty much a back marker, so it doesn't really seem to make too much sense for them anymore. But Yuki Snowder is going to join Vettel and Ricardo at the Nordschleife. And it's pretty funny, he actually mentioned here, Yuki was like, yeah, I've only ever driven the Nordschleife on the Gran Turismo games, but I'm looking forward to doing so. So I thought that was pretty funny from him. There was also this from Carlos Sainz, saying that he intends in the near future to sign a new long-term deal at Ferrari. We'll see what they do about this because Leclerc, I imagine, isn't so convinced. Just because Leclerc, given his talents, he might be able to get a seat at a better team in the near future. Whether one will open up at Red Bull or even Aston Martin potentially, or certainly Mercedes, Leclerc might think he has better options if he wants to win a championship in the coming years. Sainz probably doesn't, and I imagine he wants to lock down the Ferrari seat if he can. He won a race for them the last season right at Silverstone, which was nice for him. A priority this winter will be to clarify my position. Bringing that for me, my objective is to win at Ferrari because his contract, I believe, runs out next year. So, you know, he's either going to look elsewhere or what he really wants to do is just lock down the contract before the season starts so he doesn't have to constantly worry during next season that where is he going to be driving the following year. I think Ferrari will probably stick with him. It's clearly the drivers aren't the problem at Ferrari, let's be honest, and they've got a fair bit of work to do. They've been making some progress, it seems, in Canada. They were pretty competitive, but their qualifying was pretty tragic, so they couldn't do much with the pace that they had. Aston Martin, though, they're very confident. Now, they do believe that the Red Bull will be on full display in Austria. Some of the characteristics of that car should suit that circuit quite well. It is a home track, after all. You'd expect them to win. But we'll see how close the other teams can be. Last year, with only one day of setup on the Friday, because it's going to be the same thing this year, another sprint race weekends. It's a different format, though, this time, right? So you've got quality on the Friday, but that's for Sunday's Grand Prix. And then Saturday will be a standalone sprint day with sprint quality and the sprint race, as we saw in Baku. But fundamentally, though, you've still got one day on the Friday, one practice session to set up your car. And Red Bull last year suffered a bit with that. This year's car seems better at getting into the right window very quickly, but last year they did struggle and their car wasn't ultimately set up for the weekends and Leclerc actually won, not from pole, can you believe? But Aston Martin are looking to go full attack in Spielberg and also they mentioned that the higher speed corners and just straight up straight line speed is where they're looking to improve. Some new upgrades that are targeting some DRS gains. This I think for Aston, I think it was very clear in a circuit like Jeddah where they were actually very very competitive with Red Bull in Sector 1, but they lost so much time on the straights to Red Bull that they were 6, 7 tenths down or something on pole, whatever it was, that weekend. Maybe 5 tenths, but they lost all their time on the straights. And since then, especially Baku, they've started to make progress in terms of straight line speeds, and they were one of the most competitive teams in a straight line in Canada. So that is where a lot of their gains are coming from. They can put a lot of time back, and it's very crucial around Austria because you've got three big DRS zones. Mercedes aren't bringing any upgrades this weekend in Austria. They certainly certainly will for Silverstone and Toto Wolf actually describes how the success they're currently seeing they haven't felt as a team for a long time probably since mid 2021 to be honest when they brought the upgrades to Silverstone they brought that year that really turned the W12 into a bit of a monster for the end of the season and that was the last time they've really felt like they've been making big progress the quote is as follows I think we can see the positive dynamic cascading transcending through the organization we feel that the car is coming together we see that our data year yields results on track and we haven't felt that for a long time. This obviously contributes to this place being in a very good place, very good mood, high spirits and confidence at Mercedes at the moment. And this is something that I believe it was George Russell, here we go, said back in April where he said, yeah, we've got big changes coming to our car. This is long before we actually saw them and that they were making more gains in that period than they made over the entirety of the winter. And obviously there's a lag time, right? They make the gains in the simulations in the wind tunnel and then there's a lag time to produce producing those upgrades for the track, but it still seems like Mercedes are very confident that whatever they're currently doing is giving them way more progress than they've seen with their car in years, pretty much since the start of these regulations. And you can ask the question, how do they mess up this badly, right, to put it into a position where they have to make this progress now, halfway through the second year, when Red Bull have already won last year's championships and they're already going to win this year's championships. But nonetheless, there is a lot of optimism from the Mercedes garage that this is far from it in terms of how their car's going to improve. They've got plenty of new things coming. Silverstone, a big one. Total Wolf said it's even bigger, the Silverstone upgrade, than the one they intended for Imola and was then brought in Monaco. So we'll see what that does. This weekend in Austria is going to be interesting because last year's W13 was actually surprisingly good there on the Friday. They almost had a chance at qualifying.
qualifying on pole before the drivers both pushed it to the absolute limit. Hamilton and Russell both found themselves in the wall with broken rear wings, certainly in Russell's case, and therefore they struggled throughout the weekend with the spare parts. The non-existent straight line speed of the W13 was really making them suffer in the sprint race and the main race itself, despite getting third, fourth, I believe, in the race, but largely thanks to Perez going out of the race early on and then Sainz's car absolutely exploding towards the end of it, but they still finished miles behind Leclerc and Verstappen at the front of the field. So it'll be interesting to see what the current Mercedes W14 car has up its sleeve in Austria this weekend, especially with only like one hour to set up the car. It can be something that teams struggle with and throws off the balance of power a little bit. But then Silverstone, Hungary, Spa is where we're really going to see, is this Mercedes going to be capable of competing with the Red Bull for race wins this season? And Aston Martin will hopefully try and achieve the same thing. I just wanted to mention this from F1 Sats who I thought was pretty interesting to close out the video, that since the turn of 2010, this is Alonso's best start technically to a season. He has 117 points as it stands. That's more than he's ever had in the last 13 years under the current point system. Now, 2012, 111 points was actually, I think, enough to be leading the championship after eight races. Just shows how arguably uncompetitive this championship has been compared to a legendary championship like 2012, that um, Alonso has more points than he had back then, but yet he is, you know, miles behind Verstappen this year, but yet he was leading it, I'm pretty sure, after eight races back then. So very much enjoyed your thoughts in the comment section below. Hit the like button if you enjoyed. Subscribe if you're new. Take care, and I'll see you next time.